Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode five of Cloud Coffee Break, the series where I help you learn more about serverless and cloud computing. So last time I showed how we can add automated integration testing of our serverless application deployed in the cloud. It worked, but there are a couple of things that weren't awesome about it. First of all, the tests always used a specifically named cloud environment wherever we were running the tests from. And second, the tests didn't run in our CI validation. So in this episode, I'm gonna show you how we can fix both of these problems. So the key to fixing these problems is by bringing the concept of multiple deployment environments into our toolbox. So deployment environment is an instance of our application that is running and available somewhere other than our development laptop. With serverless, that means an instance of our application running in the cloud. So in the dim and distant past of 15 to 20 years ago, it was very typical to have three deployment environments. Dev was a place where the entire development team could iterate their work. Test or staging was a production-like environment where we could validate our application before releasing it to users. And finally, production was the version of our application actually in use. And we limited ourselves to just these three environments since getting a new deployment environment often took a long time, like months. And also because environments were expensive because they corresponded to literal individual physical machines. So fast forward to today, and what I see in many places is that people are still using the same basic deployment environments dev, test, and prod. However, this limitation of three different deployment environments often doesn't make sense at all with serverless development. The, the constraints that we had before, cost and time to get a new environment, no longer apply. With serverless, we pay by usage, not deployed instances, and creating new environments is fast. And so we can free ourselves from having to share development environments across multiple people working in parallel and free ourselves from using the same environments for different tasks. Instead, we can think about having many more deployment environments for different people and different activities. For instance, in development, every developer can have their own environment, avoiding the need to coordinate with other people. They can even have multiple environments if they want to run something in the background while also iterating on a new feature. In testing, we can separate out the different types of testing in order to perform automated testing in parallel or with increasingly production-like integration points. We may even have ephemeral environments for testing, and I'll be talking about that in the next episode. Of course, we still need a production environment, but even in production, we may have multiple environments for things like blue-green releases. With AWS Serverless, there are two main containers or boundaries that we can use to delineate different environments. One is CloudFormation stacks, which are also referred to in some places in the AWS console as serverless applications. A CloudFormation stack is an instance of the resources defined in a CloudFormation template. And we've already seen stacks and templates in this series. Our Hello World app is a stack that is an instance of the CloudFormation template in the root of our Coffee Store project. We can also use AWS accounts or sub-accounts to divide environments. Now, I'm a huge fan of using different accounts for different deployment types. But typically, having a separate account per deployment environment instance is a heck of a lot of work unless someone in your organization has got your account automation working exceptionally well. And so I'm going to focus on using CloudFormation stacks as our unit of deployment environment. So this episode's coding is all about enhancing our use of CloudFormation to embrace this idea of many deployment environments. First, we're going to add a new script to the root of our project to consistently support personalized deployment environments. Next, we're going to incorporate these environments into our integration test so that we're no longer using the same environment every time. 
Third, we're going to allow having custom named environment. And that allows us to add integration tests to our CI automation. There's a lot here, so let's get going. So first of all, I'm going to show you a deployment script that you can use to deploy the app. So far, you've been running SAM deploy, having originally at some point once run SAM deploy dash dash guided. This first run with dash dash guided created a non-version file called samconfig.toml, which was used from then on. Now this way of working with SAM deploy is great when you're getting started, but on a team, we typically want a little more consistency. And so we're gonna to switch to using a more directed form of SAM deploy. And once you've got all of this set up, you can delete that samconfig.toml file that you had sticking around from before. I'm gonna be writing this script using a bash shell script. Now in other places, you may wanna use a different scripting language, but I'm very happy using bash. Uh, and it's not that complicated what I'm going to be doing, uh, so hopefully you'll be able to follow along. Now, while it is fairly small, there are three, three distinct parts to this deployment script, and I'm going to go over each of them in turn. So first, after a couple of bash script related lines, we define the name of our deployment environment. And there are a couple of things to point out here. First, the name of the deployment environment is the name of the CloudFormation stack that we're going to deploy. Next, we want to add some kind of differentiation of stack names for different developers. Here, I'm using the environment's username, but you may want to pick something else. And later on in this episode, I'll be allowing customization of this stack name. But for now, for this first iteration, I want to go with something simple, and so the environment username is sufficient. This next part of the script is defining where we want SAM to store temporary deployment artifacts. So back in episode three, I talked about the account-wide resources stack that set up a single S3 bucket for this purpose. And if you haven't deployed that yet, it's in the account-wide resources subdirectory of the coffee store repo. And you'll need to deploy that before continuing. Alternatively, if you have a different S3 bucket for this purpose, you can change the script. Now, SAM-guided created a bucket for this too. But in an organization, I like to more explicitly manage this bucket so that we can declare things like lifecycle policies, uh, encryption, etc. Also, I only like to have one of these buckets per AWS account, since otherwise they can get out of hand. And managing hundreds of S3 buckets can cause real headaches. So how do we get the name of the S3 bucket? Well, I do this in different ways in different places. But the account-wide resources stack that I've got here creates an AWS account global name called a CloudFormation export that we can query. The script uses the AWS CLI to get all of the CloudFormation exports for our account and then picks just the one that we care about. If we're unable to find the export, then the script aborts. Now note that this slide, this slide isn't quite valid bash with the new lines, but I wanted to make it easier to read. Uh, the version that is in uh, GitHub will work correctly. So now that we have our stack name and a place to store deployment artifacts, we can deploy our stack. We use SAM deploy again, but this time we specify a bunch of parameters so that it can run in an automated fashion and not use the local SAM config file. Now there's a lot going on here, but because it's in a script, we don't need to type this manually every time we want to deploy. Next, I'm gonna show you this script actually running from my local laptop. I'll admit I cheated very slightly in that I cut out some of the pauses. So the actual deployment took about a minute rather than just a few seconds that you're gonna see here. So here is deploy.sh running using my username of Mike and deploying a new stack. So here you see the CloudFormation uh, log going through and very quickly our stack is deployed. And you can see here where it says successfully created updated stack coffee store dash Mike in US East one. Once the deployment has completed, we can find the new deployment environment in CloudFormation. And here we can see the stack deployed in the video, Coffee Store Mic. I mentioned earlier that in some places in the AWS console, CloudFormation stacks are referred to as serverless applications. 
Now, the main place that you'll see this is in the Lambda console under the Applications tab. And if you go here, you'll find another view of that very same deployed environment, but this time trimmed down a little to just show the more interesting resources. Now, before we move on, I want to briefly mention Serverless Framework. For those of you that don't know, Serverless Framework is an alternative tool to AWS SAM. And in fact, it's been around a couple of years longer than SAM. If you're using Serverless Framework, then what I'm calling here a stack is a stage in Serverless Framework. Now, it's not entirely obvious from the Serverless Framework documentation, or at least it wasn't to me, but you can specify any stage name you want when you're calling SLS deploy. Just as in SAM, you can specify the stack name parameter. So in fact, Serverless Framework creates a CloudFormation stack based upon the stage name. Now, I'm much more of a fan of SAM and CloudFormation than I am of Serverless Framework, but I wanted to mention this because all the stuff that I'm doing here with SAM is reproducible if you're using Serverless Framework. Also, I want to say thanks to Yan Tui for helping me out with this point. Jan is absolutely the person who can help you with serverless framework if you need any of your questions answering. Okay, now we have our stack deployed to a fresh new environment, let's move on. In the previous episode, our integration test was using a deployment environment named SAM-app. Now that we can have differently named environments, we need our integration test to be able to find the right one. So first of all, we need to make a small change to our application's template so that we can query a stack to find the generated ID of the deployed API gateway. Here we are outputting the value of the serverless HTTP API so that it can be queried by our test. So this requires a little explanation, certainly for those of you that are not used to CloudFormation. So first of all, CloudFormation has a concept named outputs. We can query our stack later to find all of the resources, but also list any output values that we created. In this case, we've created an output named HTTP API and have assigned it the value of the serverless HTTP API resource. Now, the keen-eyed among you will notice, however, that there is no serverless HTTP resource in this template. In fact, there's only one resource named hello world function. So what's this other serverless HTTP API resource? Well, SAM creates an API gateway implicitly for us. And it does that because our Lambda function has an event of type HTTP API. The name of the implicitly created API gateway resource is serverless HTTP API, which is why we can reference it in the output section. Deploy this change to your template with a deploy script from step one, and you'll see that CloudFormation is now outputting the HTTP ID. Now we can update our integration test. For this update, we change the setup function that we created last time. The result of this setup function is still to populate an API endpoint variable, but we need to change how we get that value. First, we capture our deployment environment name. It's the same one we use in the deploy shell script using the same environment variable. Next, we query the CloudFormation API and we ask for all the detail of our specific stack. After we get the response, we drill down to get the API ID. This is the value we output on the previous slide. The API ID isn't enough though. We need the API endpoint. And so we query the API Gateway API to get the list of deployed APIs, find the one matching our ID, and then capture the endpoint. OK, there's a lot of APIs going on, so I'll repeat that. We query the API of the API Gateway service to get the list of all the API gateways that are deployed. And then we find the one matching our ID that we just got in the previous section. Once we found that, we can capture the API endpoint value. With the API, with the endpoint captured, our integration test can run as before. And here is that integration test running. Notice that it's captured the correct stack ID, coffee store mic, based upon my user environment variable. And also notice it's captured the API endpoint for my specific development stack. 
So now we have individual deployment environments for different developers, which is better than the one SAM app environment than we had before. But there's still a restriction here. The deployment environment name is tied to the username of the person running the script. Well, what about our CI environment? Or what if we want to deploy multiple stacks per developer? Or what if two developers share the same username? For all of these times, we want to be able to create custom named stacks while still making the default case of using the username easy. So unsurprisingly, the first thing we need to do is update the deployment shell script. Fortunately, the change is very small. For now, it's sufficient to say that if the script is called with an argument, then we use that argument as the stack name. Otherwise, we use the same username based stack name that we created before. That means that I can run this from my terminal and it will create an entirely separate deployment environment for me named Coffee Store Mic2. Because we've made the stack name customizable, we also need to change our integration test to support that. Our integration test setup function needs to query the correct stack in CloudFormation. Again, for now, we can say that if stack name is specified in this environment variable, then we can use that value. Otherwise, we use the default value from earlier. Now, if we run the integration tests, with a specific stack name environment variable, our integration test setup code will use that when querying the CloudFormation API. Okay, we're in the closing stages for this episode. Because we can use multiple deployment environments and because we can customize the name of those environments, we can incorporate our integration test into our CI automation. And that means we can run both unit tests and integration tests automatically in code build whenever we push a change to GitHub. First, we need to change the project configuration for code build. Now, the main change overall in this whole step is that our code build project is actually going to be deploying an application and not just running local unit tests. And so we need to give the code build AWS IAM role a lot more access to AWS services than it had before, which was just to log using CloudWatch. And so we need to make a change to our IAM policy. And what you do for your IAM policies really depends a lot on the rest of your company. I'm not gonna lie, in many places, I just give code build administrator access and let it do whatever it wants to do in a particular account. However, it really is best if you can to try to lock code build down to only the permissions it needs. So in this example, I've locked down the services that code build can use. But for most of those services, it's still got full access. One example where I am limiting where I am limiting it though is in what access it has to S3 buckets. I'm saying for now that it can only use our deployment artifacts bucket. Now, in order to make this policy work, I need to provide the name of that bucket as a CloudFormation parameter, which I do at the top of the file, and I, I then later refer to that value using a CloudFormation subfunction down at the bottom of this example. Since I've changed the parameters of the code build project's template, I need to change the deployment script of the code build project, passing in the same CloudFormation artifact bucket value that we capture in the main application's deployment script. So here is specifically our deploy-ci deployment script change to include this artifact, this artifacts bucket value. Now, if you're following along, you can now rerun deploy-ci.sh to deploy this change to the code build project. But now for the moment we've been building up to. Because we want to run integration tests, we need to have a deployment environment to test against. And so before we run our tests, we run the same deploy.sh script that we've been running using our own development machine. This deployment process will run in the code build project, but the result will be the same as running it from our own workstations, a CloudFormation stack deployed to our account. We give the deployment environment a specific name, in this case, Coffee Store CI Test. The first time that code build runs this, it will create a new stack 
and in future, it will update this stack. Once that deployment script is complete, we can run our tests. We add the name of the stack as an environment variable, and then we run our entire test suite, unit and integration tests, by using the test target. And if we commit and push this change, then CodeBuild will use this new build spec. So let's look and see what it does. So this is a little snippet of the code build logs. And here we see code build deploying our application via our deploy script and the SAM CLI, just as we would on our own laptop. And we can see that it's using the correct name of the stack. So see here that this is, uh, the time here is 1546. And so about a minute later at 1547, we can see code build running the tests first the unit tests, and then the integration tests. And we can see for the integration test that it's specifically using its own Coffee Store CI test environment to test against. So there we have it. Integration tests running against a cloud deployed version of our application running in our CI automation project. So that wraps it up for this episode. So today I built on the integration test work that I did last time. First of all, I provided scripting to consistently support personalized deployment environments. Then I incorporated these deployment environments into integration testing. Third, I allowed custom name deployment environments. And finally, I used a custom named environment to enable integration tests in our CI automation. So getting automated integration tests running against our application in the cloud is good. Uh, enabling them in CI automation, like we've done this time, is better. But what is best is if we can use an entirely new deployment environment every single time that we run our integration tests. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do next time. Of course, the best way to know when I've uh, produced that new episode is to subscribe on YouTube. So please subscribe on YouTube and perhaps even like this video if you liked it. Uh, in the meantime, here are this week's uh, or this episode's resources and my contact details. And I'll see you next time for episode six.